Good evening, folks. If you're just joining us, you're welcome to another edition of Just Banter. We've been having a very interesting conversation around the issue of Nigeria's independence, Nigeria at 60. And we're taking a very deep and closer look at it. We're having two cerebral fellows, if you haven't met them before, Honorable Barista. Nigeria has loved titles. His name is Kaloma Daru Mustafa. He is a legal practitioner and a politician. And then we also have Kunle Lawal. Kunle Lawal is the executive director of the Electoral College. Now, shortly before the break, we were talking about education. Now, when we talk about education, Kunle Lawal, you run an electoral college. The first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word college is a place of higher learning, whether it's a secondary school or it's a university. What type of education do you think Nigerians need? Because we keep talking about the problems in Nigeria, but we hardly ever talk about the solutions. Is the Electoral College a form of remedy to the issues that we have in terms of political illiteracy that most Nigerians have? Yes, of course, because um, we look at it that first um, we impact knowledge. The first set of courses, we have a bouquet, which is a course in literacy and governance 101. And the first things we learn are what the executive does, what the legislature does, the role of the judiciary in elections. And then you go as far as even understanding campaign messaging. Now, people will look at it that we're teaching them to run for office. No, if you don't know what how to run for office, you can't tell how someone who's running badly for office actually is performing. So I've learned to, to transfer knowledge that way. Another arm of the electoral college, which I didn't talk about earlier, is that we also help governance with deliverables. Like um, you notice there was some recent fight between, I don't want to call names, two people in governance on Twitter, which we felt was- Please this call one. names by all means. Because why do Nigerians, why do Nigerians keep saying they don't want to call names? When these things are out there, they are facts, why that, not? Abike Dabri and Isa Putam. Okay. I was, it was this real showdown between two people who are highly pleased. And um, after that, we decided to respond instead of getting into the usual narrative of pointing fingers at who, who, who was right and who was wrong and we came up with the social media guidelines for people in political office okay. and we've tra- we forwarded this to the national assembly if they take it or we don't take it but at least we proposed the solutions that were not so we're working on governance deliverables which can enable governance to function as they are supposed to function so we try to look at the whole the democratic setting in a holistic view we try to also help those in governance help the electorate understand what governance should be, and then try to project what, where Nigeria could actually go. And if you ask why, I'll tell you why. One in every six black people approximately is Nigerian. The faith of the black race is dependent on Nigeria's success. Nelson Mandela said so as well. I agree. And it's a very strong point. So when, when you're looking at everything we've tried to do or everything we've tried to educate people about, we, it's just to lift their consciousness. You have people that have PhDs in political science and do not know how local governments run. It's that bad. And in Nigeria? Yes, yes, it's that bad. And it's, it's quite the situation. So we put together, you know, quite facilitators that are very well experienced. I'm hoping one day we'll be able to get Kaluma as a facilitator in one of our classes because we're expanding massively. With pleasure. And, and it will be a great thing because I know he's well experienced. Um, someone who also has been within the legal system, someone we respect a lot. And looking at all that, the truth is that Nigerians don't even have mentors to look up, look up to. That's not a problem. The role models. And the role models are funny you know i'll give you an example and this is simple just for just maybe explain governance it's very simple um there was once a common sense senator and then there was a senator that loved making videos you know as dino and was full of a lot of drama now looking at both of them the average nigerian will tell you senator ben bruce was a better senator but i would argue with this though i dislike you know Melaya as a person but i will say this you know, Melaya proposed about nine bills, passed about seven as a senator. Do you want to know how many uh, Ben Bruce proposed? Four bills, zero passed. At the cost of close to a billion naira for four years in office, no bill passed. No. Yes. 
Yes. But you see, it. the funny thing is this. Uh, I'm sorry about my loud exclamations. It's shocking. <laughs> but it goes back to the issue of bicameral legislature, the amount of money, the expenditure that goes into running the type of government that we run. A lot of the monies that are being spent on running this bicameral legislature should actually be going into capital projects of the country. But you now find that you are spending majority of the money that comes into Nigeria, you are spending it on senators and uh, what they call House of Reps members, House of Assembly members. Why do we have so much duplication? Is that, we're still on that issue of education. Is that lack of education? 